is Jesus Manuel Menagarza for RV and Travel Adventures. Hope you're doing fantastic wherever you're at. After I returned from uh, Mexico uh, mid-January, I had planned to go do some camping, usually Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I resorted to go check out some of the local campgrounds and do some camping or do some boondocking. But uh, that wasn't going to be the case. About two weeks ago, I think it was two weeks ago, it was snowing quite a bit. In fact, there was sleet and there was quite a bit of ice on the road. In front of my house, it was about an inch of solid ice. And in uh, Fort Worth, they don't clean the suburban streets. It's the highways mainly and some of the major, major streets, but not in the suburbs. They just ignore us. Last week, I had planned to say, I'll do, ne I'll do the next week. And last week, it uh, also had some inclement weather. Super, super cold, a lot of rain, etc. A lot of wind, uh, not conducive to uh, going in the neighborhood, you know, 50, 150 miles away and doing some camping. So this week I said, hey, uh, it's bound to be nice weather. It showed it on the forecast. It was going to be nice Tuesday and Wednesday. And uh, but yesterday, Tuesday, and today, Wednesday, it's been uh, raining cats and dogs. My friend is uh, a bit flooded and so is my backyard a bit flooded and not to the extreme but you know definitely the garden and flower beds are definitely flooded not good so hopefully in a couple weeks <laughs> i'll be able to do some camping in this edition i'm going to be talking about uh is your truck uh capable of towing your travel trailer or fifth wheel toy hauler of course, there's various sizes of uh, travel trailers. We have, you know, travel trailers that weigh a thousand pounds. Some that weigh uh, fifteen thousand pounds. Heavy, 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 heavy. Uh, you know, fifth wheels and such. So, let's first talk about truck tow rating. And let's use my vehicle and my uh, travel trailer as an example. And I've d uh, driven. You know, taking my uh, travel trailer in 2022, about 3,000 miles of camping, mainly on the weekend, sometimes for a week here and there, going to the coast, going to Indiana, uh, going to the, you know, different parts of Texas, okay? So my truck is a Chevy Colorado pickup with a cab, and it has a tow rating of 7,000 pounds, okay? So... And it has a cargo carrying capacity of almost 2,000 pounds, though I never, never carry that much stuff. If I had a bigger truck, maybe I would fill it up. But since I have a smaller, what's called a mid-sized truck, I don't fill it up that much. I'm very cognizant. In fact, I have a little scale, and I measure every box that I put inside so I know exactly how much it weighs. And I've weighed my uh, travel trailer, and I go, okay, let's just keep it up to about 56, uh, 5,600 pounds. Just uh, give us a little bit of a leeway between... 5,500, 5,600, and 7,000 pounds. You know, I don't want to, you know, get too close to the, you know, the maximum, okay? So, um, again, I am very cognizant of that. Again, again, I have a little, you know, scale. I put my, I get the stuff that I put in a box and I weigh, and I go, that's 32 pounds. That's 8 pounds. Uh, those those uh, box of Wheaties and, and the Cocoa Puffs and uh, my salad dressing and et cetera, that's about seven pounds. And I add it all up and I calculate it. I have a little uh, graph and I know exactly what I'm carrying. I know for a fact, I'm not the kind of person, maybe you are this kind of person. Maybe you have a gigantic fifth wheel, you know, uh, you know, a one ton truck. It can haul this stuff, but I never carry a heavy cast iron grill or a lot of stuff. Uh, most of the stuff I carry is camera equipment and stuff just to maintain, you know, the, the vehicle, you know, the, the travel trailer and the vehicle, okay? So I know my capacities and I try to keep, you know, a certain uh, distance between where I'm, at, where I'm at and what's the maximum. So I'm usually about 1,500 pounds under my, uh, you know, capacity, my truck, you know, capacity, my tow rating. I also maintain my vehicle on a consistent basis. I always take it down the street about three blocks away to my uh, mechanic and they uh, give it oil changes, they check the brakes, they check the fluids, they check it all, they check everything, the engine, and I go check the tires and they say, hey, your tires are really good, they're for, good for another two years. And um, probably in 
next year, next year after that, I'm going to get some new tires. And what kind of tires am I going to get? Am I going to get those off-road tires? I don't go off-roading. I am. I, I have a two, you know, two-wheel drive car. I don't have a four-wheel jar, car. Or, I mean, truck that's jacked up and and capable of going off-road. So I just buy highway tires. You know, I just buy highway tires, nice quiet tires, and I'm pretty happy. And I get fifty, sixty thousand miles on my tires. So my tires, my engine, my brakes, my fluids, uh, everything's copacetic. Everything's working good. It's smooth. I drive around in my little Chevy Colorado. It's pretty quiet. It sounds good. When I press the brakes, it doesn't make any funny, funny noises. So you have to maintain your vehicle, of course, the suspension, all that other stuff. But uh, uh, one thing you have to be careful of is what kind of roads you're going to be traveling on. You have to decide uh, what are my capacities? What are my abilities? What are my limitations? Some of you can go off-roading. I wish I could go off-roading. I wish I had a big 4x4 uh, truck with a, you know, raised off the, the ground quite a bit, <laughs> quite a bit. And, uh, you know, but I don't, I don't have a fancy suspension or anything. Two wheel drive. That's it. I can go down the highway, maybe down a gravel road and call it good. You know, the gravel roads they have in the RV parks, the dirt roads they have in some of these parks. I cannot go where there's lumpy, big bumps and boulders and stuff like that. I've done that once and I popped a tire never again. Okay. So you have to know what kind of roads are going to go on and decide ahead of time, uh, all your plans, your limitations, and your understandings, okay? I've been on many a twisty road. I lived in California, and you know, when you go down Big Sur Highway 1, it goes like this quite a bit, and it's rather narrow. A lot of people who are from the Plains areas, Texas, they go, oh, that's scary. And of course, over there by uh, Lake Tahoe, they have some roads that, you know, you as you're driving, you can see the way down there, some, some canyon, some, you know, some... People are, you know, uh, camping down there and stuff like that. You know, you have to be able and cognizant of what your limitations are as a driver and what you going to be taking, where you're going to be taking your RV. I know in some roads, I've seen this quite a bit. They, they have a sign that says, no travel trailers. And there's different sizes, of course. But I've seen it. No travel trailers or fifth wheels beyond a length of 27, 28 feet. They don't want you taking it because when those turns, when you go around the turn, you might not be able to make it. The other end might be banging up against uh, some, some boulders or some, the edge of the mountain or stuff. So they want you to take something small. So you have limitations. There are some roads that actually say on the side of the road, do not bring your gigantic 45-foot, you know, you know, uh, fifth wheel over here, okay? Por favor, don't do that. It's a stupid thing to do. So uh, you have to be cognizant of those situations. I've driven from uh, Prescott, Arizona down to Jerome, and that's one twisty road. It just keeps on going like this. It just keeps on going. I'm going, what? And I was driving that at night. I went, man, that's a lot of, that's a lot, a lot, a lot of road. Just to get from here to there, it, you know, it, it took me an extra, it was so incredibly circuitous. So those roads, you have to be careful on, okay? And of course, you have to be worried about the grade, like at Rocky Mountain National Forest. I've been behind people where the, the engine is, the smoke's coming out of the engine, smoke's coming out of the brakes. It's pretty, pretty bad. Or in, by the Mojave in Arizona and certain places, there's a certain grade. You know, you got to be understanding that what are your capacities? Are you going to be in tra Is it going to be a busy time of the day and you're going to be going up and up and up and just pressing the brakes? Giving a little bit of engine brake, engine brake, and going downhill, engine brake, engine brake, engine brake. It might stress your travel trailer and you, <laughs> your partner, and of course your vehicle that you're touring with. So you have to be cognizant of that. That's the word I'm using today, cognizant. You actually have to use your brain and process this information. Have you ever been, you know, like in Iowa? I was going down Iowa, visiting the in-laws over there by Cresco, uh, Des Moines, in those towns like that, Iowa City. And I saw trucks on the side of the road, you know, these big old, you know, uh, big gigantic trucks, diesel trucks, and they're all on the side of the road because the wind blew them off. You can imagine with a travel trailer how rough that can be. I only went down there in my vehicle and I had no issues, but I can imagine on a super windy day in the plains that you can be, have some, uh, you know, you're, you're starting to fishtail. Finally, I'm going to talk about how do you feel. Now, of course, when you're driving down that road, uh, are you hungry? You got to go to the restroom? Are your legs are starting to feel a little you know, out of it? 
Are you old like me and you start getting a little, you know, I got, I got to get out and just stretch because I get all cramped up, you know. I got to go out there and do a little walk around the RV. Hopefully not in some area that's a bit dangerous, but, you know, hopefully find a spot that's safe go on the side of the road and do some stretches, go to the restroom, have a beverage, you know, go to the RV and get yourself a beverage. <laughs> That's what they good about having an RV. You can make a sandwich, you can go have a beverage, uh, you can sit in your chairs, hang out for a little bit. Thanks for checking out RV and Travel Adventures. My name is Jesus Manuel Menegarza. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I would greatly appreciate it. And leave your kind and friendly comments below. Abajo. Again, uh, this is my opinion and my opinion alone. If you have a different opinion, if you have a better idea of how to uh, uh, proceed as a camper going down the road, uh, please leave your kind, again, and friendly comments below. I would greatly appreciate it. And the people that check out this channel could use uh, your definitely experience and your words of wisdom. From Fort Worth, Texas, this has been Asus Manuel Menegarza. I didn't get to go camping last weekend. I mean, last week. The week before that or the week before that uh, hopefully maybe in a couple days i'll be able to go camping again uh, it's been a while since i've gone camping again from fort worth texas this has been asus manuel menegarza gracias adios bye bye